Chris, uh, we're catching up with you after the summer because you've been given a new role of Head of Football Operations. Can you tell us a little bit about what, the, what that entails for you? Yeah, it's, it's something that we, we've been looking at for a while um, in respect to it bringing to the football club. And then when we sat down and, and spoke about what will it will entail and who the person's going to be, the same natural progression we spoke with the manager and uh, the chairman. You know, whether I'd be suitable for that role, whether I'd want to do that role. Um, but it's something that, uh, you know, this is the way the modern game's going. Um, you know, I think people don't realise just exactly what does go on um, in the operations of a football club in order for Saturday at three o'clock to get results. And, you know, the, what what entails in the assistant manager's role used to cover quite a few of these aspects. However, the, since we've moved to Carrington, there's an awful lot more to, to it than that. So, you know, it was something that we've all sat down and uh, there will be a lot of um, broad areas within the football club that need looking at. And uh, it just gives me a little bit more of an opportunity to step back um, and have a broader angle of the view rather than, you know, purely focusing just on the first team and on that Saturday three o'clock uh, getting the result but ultimately that is still where you know, the priority has to be is making sure that the, you know the, everything's perfect, every fine detail is ready for when the players get onto the pitch at three o'clock and everybody's comfortable, you know, we're going to get a result at quarter five. When the gaffer announced this in his interview on Monday, he mentioned that a big part of the role was that you were going to have a lot of involvement in the academy and creating that bridge between the academy and the first team. Can you tell us sort of how you're going to do that? Yeah, I think it'll be a, um, having a, a look at the, the broad structure, and certainly something that I've been involved with um, here at Bury with the academy, and it's making sure that the, there's a, a pathway into the first team. Um, we've got some fantastic youngsters here, Ryan Kidd's been brought in um, and, and they're near the first team, if not ready for the first team and uh, it's just making sure that we've got structures in place where you know the development of a young player will get them into our first team and um, because we've got such talent within our system, we, we're, they're actually getting noticed off Premier League clubs and uh, we've got to make decisions on that, is it, is it going to be right for their progression to actually to move on? Um, and, uh, and and allow them to go into that environment from a younger age and, and, and sort of would it fast track them but we'll look at everybody's individuals and, and, and make sure that it's right for, for the player and hopefully there'll be a benefit for the football club so again it's it's making sure that we maximise the potential that's at Carrington in, in order to develop players because that's what we are uh, and the managers you know developed a, a number of players who's gone on to careers and, and that's at the younger level right the way through so that you know the actual development sometimes is as a 26 27 year old um, in order for them to gain uh, an experience and to progress themselves similar to what we've sort of done within the first team environment where you're Danny Mayers, you're Nathan Camerons you know you can always learn you can always make yourself better. What will be your involvement with the first team now then will you still be coaching them and what will you be doing on a Saturday afternoon now at three o'clock? Um, well again this is something else that we looked at but the, the main sort of priority will be ensuring that everything is organised and, and making sure that uh, the team is prepared on a different aspect. It won't be as the coaching that I have been as hands on um, but it's certainly um, the manager knows exactly uh, what he's after and he knows what a soundboard I am. And, and the level of trust that is between us is, is paramount. So, you know, being up in the stand sometimes does help you. You see it's something else. And uh, we, one thing we noticed in the, the sort of the, the final push, which we called it, was it was so intense. We were so wrapped up in pushing and pushing and pushing to get us over the line. And, and we did, and we did fantastically well. Um, but it was that, that trying to breathe and that was something that I sort of stepped back and you've got to make sure that you're not missing anything, you're not... And, and this is something that now I'm not, I, I'm able to do. I won't constantly be in the bubble and, and trust me, when you're in the, in the dugout, it is. You, there's different kind of emotions on you. you you're so close to the field of play. Um, you've got to you know, make sure you can manage that and, and be calm and cool and collected, which we are. But uh, hopefully this will just... Um, Aid in another dimension and sort of stepping back and thinking, right, this we can see it, there's a full overview, we can evaluate the performance as we always do and um, and move forward. So 
priority still first team, but the, as I say, the, the broader angle of what I'm trying to do is to just make sure that we can pull all organisations of the club together. Um, that'll be the academy, um, that'll be the sports science and the medical areas, um, and, 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 and looking at the coaches and making sure that you know that they have got a level of progression and, and keep learning in this environment. So. Lots to do, and, and I think sometimes as we sat down and, and it will evolve, um, you know, from a recruitment perspective. But it's just making sure that we've got the certain processes and, and uh, structures in place that we can progress as a football club to where we ultimately want to be. You mentioned earlier about it being a natural progression for yourself. Mm. What characteristics and what have you learned from your job as assistant manager that you can that's going to help you in your new role? I think. I've been very fortunate in, in, in my career that I've, I've been a player, um, you know, I've been a, a involved with youth, I've been involved with academy in the management levels, um, I've been a manager, I've been an assistant manager, I've been a caretaker manager um, and quite a few of those things I've actually done here at Berry Football Club so when I was thrown in at the deep end so to speak was a player manager at such a young age you actually do think you know quite a lot um, and you think, yeah, I'll be okay. Re realism is that you, you, you don't. Um, when you're younger, this magical word called experience, you you, you know, you, you don't really relate to it. And that's, as I've got older and, and been involved in it and seen all angles of how a football club is run as a business as, as well as, you know, football. And I know I can draw from my experiences now to take it forward. I have a business background as well as a football background and, and this is the way the game's gone now. You have to marry the, th the two up, you've got to make sure that everything it runs smoothly um, and, and allows the manager you know, to, to do what he does best and that is to get on the training ground, to work the team, to, to worry about the coaching aspects. He's, you know, he's not available 24-7 all the time, if he is he will end up you know, getting problems which he doesn't really need to entail. And, this is a way of sort of deciphering away some of the, the, the pressures that are put on the management and it's still assisting them, it's assisting them from a different angle but it's, um, it's just making sure that he, he's fully focused and he, he'll get the information that I'll be putting on his desk will be you know, what I've filtered through and, and relevant to what he needs not to him having to cipher through stuff for hours and think well that, that was a waste of it, I was, and time is precious, it's massive um, you know because we we come in and, and work long hours. However, within them hours, are structured in, to make sure that we're doing things to maximise, you know, the potential of the football club. Sometimes you can be a busy fool. That's something that we're certainly not. Just a final one then. Uh, obviously, the fixtures were released yesterday, and then we, the day before, we obviously we drew Wigan in the Capital One Cup. What are your thoughts on that? And uh, have you spoken to the gaffer while he's been away about it? We're excited. I mean, as I say, we, we've pitting our wits against a team that you know was a Premier League club um, you know, and, and they find themselves in in the third tier now but uh, it will certainly be a good test we, we enjoyed the test early on in pre-season against Bolton last year um, and felt we acquitted ourselves well um, so it will be no different and then when you look at the fixtures again there's some, some fantastic clubs um, in this division we know the step up is massive you know I, I've been in this division in, in the management level and uh, as a player and, and I know it is a big jump, and, and again, that is why we need um, as much sort of help as possible to make sure that we, we are able to compete. I mean, fantastic in, in our recruitment, I feel, with the three signings that we've made, um, and you know, and we're trying to bring similar players of that ilk in. Uh, and the one good thing that we're all cute is with we we very we managed to put you very well. Um, in order to maximise the potential of the player coming in and, uh, and aiding the, the able squad which has got us promoted. So we're quite excited sort of seeing where you know, our, our group of players is from last year and, and how they'll cope in, in this first team, uh, this first division environment. But it, uh, no, we, 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 we can't wait to get going. I think once the fixtures come out, everybody sort of gets planning. And again, that's something that I'm involved in. We, we've been fortunate that uh, it's quite a northern league. Um, our five, potentially six travels are, are pre-Christmas, 
So you, you know you, that's already in place. These are the little bits of detail. I don't think people sort of think you you, you do plan you, and it comes week to week. It doesn't. It, it starts now. It's um, there's a whole season of planning. Um, you know we know exactly where we're up to in, in respect of pre-season and where we're going to be and and where the the uh, the first fixture was going to be. But until you get that, we we couldn't plan beyond that. Now we can, and, and as I say, we'll, we'll certainly have. Uh, Things in place ready for the whole season and the, the trials and tribulations that are thrown at us. But uh, no, we're really looking forward to it.